In this tutorial, we will explore the new output functionality in BioWin 5.0 for displaying power demand and energy use. This includes the ability to add predefined power tables and generate power or energy use plots automatically. BioWin 5 tracks power requirements for a number of predefined categories, including blower, mixing, mechanical, pumping, heating, surface aeration, solid liquid separation and disinfection, and heating, ventilation, and cooling power. These power categories allow the power requirements to be easily displayed. To add a predefined power table display, right-click on the blank album pane where you wish to place the table. Select Power Table from the resulting pop-up menu. The Table Editor dialog will open. Choose the elements you want to include in the table. All of the elements are grouped into their respective power categories, including blower, mixing, and mechanical power. The power categories displayed in this tab will vary depending on your specific configuration. By default, all of the elements appear in the selected list for each of the power categories. To remove an element from the selected list, select the element and click the left pointing arrow. Use the double left pointing arrow to remove all of the elements from the selected list. You may also double click on an element to move from one list to another. In the options group, specify if you would like to show power costs, show total, or show system-wide total by checking the respective checkboxes. Show total adds up the power demand from each power category. System-wide total includes HVAC power, which is not included as a power category in the table editor. Click the OK button to create the table and exit the table editor. If you are modeling CHP in an anaerobic digester element, the power generated from CHP will also be included in the power table along with the net power. The predefined power table groups power based on categories. If you're interested in viewing the individual power demand for an element, you can add an element specific power table display. To add an element specific power table display, right click on the blank album pane where you wish to place the table. Select table from the resulting pop up menu. The Table Editor dialog will open. From the Elements tree view, select the elements that you wish to include in the table. You can expand individual element groups, select specific elements, click on them and push the right pointing arrow to move them to the selected elements list. Or you can move entire element groups over at once by clicking on the element group and clicking the right pointing arrow. If the element you have selected has multiple outputs, like a secondary clarifier, all the outputs are added to the selected element list by default. If you don't want one of the outputs, simply click on the entry and press the delete key on your keyboard. You can move the elements around by clicking on them and clicking the up or down arrows. You can change the order of a group of elements by using the control or shift key to select the group and then click the up or down arrow. Choose the variables you want to include in the table from the element specific list under the ninth subcategory. You can either scroll down to category 9 or simply type 9 in the element specific list. If you want to add more than one variable from a given group, you may do so. To select a continuous group, click the first variable of the group and while holding the shift key, click the last variable of the group. To select non-continuous variables, hold the control key and click the desired variables in succession. Once you have selected the variables you want in the table, Move them to the selected variables list by clicking the right pointing arrow or simply double clicking on the variable. Select concentrations. Mass rates in both are irrelevant for the power information. To add a blank line between table entries, click the add blank line button. The blank line will show as a short dashed line in the selected elements list. The blank line can be moved up or down in the list just like other elements. Multiple lines may be added to the list. If you want BioWin to display the total of a table's columns, click the Add Total So Far button. The word total will be added to the selected elements list, and a total will always totalize the rows preceding it. Click OK to finish. If you want to add a current power distribution plot for viewing steady state simulation results, in the blank album page, right click and select Chart. Click on the power slash energy use tab. Choose the elements you want to include in the plot. 
Again, by default, all of the elements appear in the selected list for each of the power categories. In the Power Demand Distribution group, you can choose a pie or a bar chart by selecting the appropriate radio button. Use the Labels Radio Button group to specify if the distribution plot labels should show name in kilowatts or name in percent. When you're satisfied with the list of selected elements and the plot and label type, click the Instantaneous Power Distribution button to generate the chart. Click the Close button to finish. If HVAC, Power, and CHP are specified for a given project, they will also appear as categories in the power distribution plots. This plot illustrates a time series plot of each of the power categories along with the total and net instantaneous power. The total power series sums up the power from each of the power categories. The net power only deviates from the total power when CHP is specified in an anaerobic digester element and the user chooses to use the power generated through CHP on site. The bottom plot here illustrates a time series plot of energy consumption. The daily energy consumption series tallies the total energy consumption over each simulated day. The monthly energy consumption series accumulates energy consumption each day of the month and then resets itself after a month of simulation. The yearly energy consumption series accumulates energy each day of the year and resets after one year of simulation. And the energy consumption series accumulates total energy consumption over time. Over the first simulated month, the monthly energy use, yearly energy use, and total energy use series will overlap. We can see this by hiding the yearly and total energy use series. And over the first simulated year, the yearly energy use and total energy use series will also overlap. To generate these plots, let's add a double pane page to the album, and the top pane will create a time series plot of all of the power categories. Right click on the top pane and select chart. Click on the power slash energy use tab. Choose the elements you want to include in the plot. I'm going to leave them all selected. In the time series plots group, you'll find all of the possible series we can add to our plot. All we need to do is select which axis we want our series to be plotted on using either the left or right radio button and click the button of the series we'd like to add. So I'm going to leave the left axis selected and click the instantaneous power by category button as well as the total and net instantaneous power button. Click close to exit. In the bottom pane, let's generate the energy consumption plots. Right click and select chart and click on the power energy use tab. Choose the elements we want to include in the plot I'm going to again leave them all selected. In the time series group, select the axes. I'm going to leave them to plot to the left axes and click all of the energy consumption buttons, daily, monthly, yearly, and overall. Click the close button to finish. The series will not be visible until we run a dynamic simulation, but should resemble the example shown. This concludes our tutorial on displaying power demand and energy use in BioN 5.0. More information on the new features in BioN5 can be found on our website as well as in the new help manual. In addition, please check out our video library for additional videos on how to use BioN.